Welcome to Learnfinity Labs, where we discover new things, learn from it, and then share it to our community. Today, we will learn how to install Nginx, Node, PHP and MySQL in Docker, to set up our very own local development environment. At the end of this video, we'll be setting up the latest version of the Laravel PHP framework, to test our local server. If you haven't watched my previous video, Docker in 10 minutes, then please do so as it will help you understand some of the things that we will be discussing here. I will be including all the links that we will be using, down on the description below. To begin, launch your browser and go to the GitHub repository to either git clone or download a zip file for your local development server. By the way, if you are not familiar with Git, it is a distributed version control system that tracks changes in any set of computer files, usually used for coordinating work among programmers who are collaboratively developing source code during software development. If you do not have Git installed, you can create a folder anywhere and name it whatever you want on your local machine, then unzip the zip file you have just downloaded. I will however, be using Git to clone our repository, so I have my terminal launched, type in, git clone, paste the link from the GitHub repository, followed by the name of the folder you want. What this command will do is that it will create the folder and make the docker files and folders available to you inside that folder you just created. After having the files available in your local machine, open the .env file inside the docker folder using your favorite text editor or IDE. Then edit the paths of the directories using the full path from your root directory. These settings will be used by docker to configure our shared volumes and working directories. A couple of things to note. If you are on a Windows machine, please replace the backslashes with forward slashes for the folder separator. Also, if you have any spaces in the names of your folder or directories, you have to properly escape it using a backslash. Now that we have edited the correct paths for your folders, it is time to build and run our containers. In your terminal, cd into the docker folder, then type docker-compose-up, dash d, while this is executing, I will be explaining our current directory structure, the docker compose yaml file and the rest of the files inside. Again, some of the things we have here were already explained on my previous video, docker in 10 minutes, so you can go back and watch it if there will be some things unclear to you. The docker folder contains all of our configuration files to set up our development environment, I will go and explain some of the details in a minute. The html folder will contain the files of our application which in this case, when we install the Laravel framework, all the files that are needed to run Laravel will be there, for data persistence. This folder will be shared between your local machine and Nginx, Node, and PHP containers. As you will see later in our Docker Compose YAML file, the mysql-database folder will be used to store our database contents, which again, for data persistence, will be shared by your machine and the mysql container. This folder will be filled with files from MySQL once we have spun up the container. Now let us explore inside the Docker folder and take a look at our configuration files. Let us take a look at the Docker Compose YAML file, which have four services. For Nginx, the build will use its own Docker file inside the Nginx folder. We also have a couple of arguments declared, or our directives, which sets the UID and GID or user ID and group ID. We need to set these, so that we will not have any permission or file ownership issues inside our Docker container. Later, you will see how are we going to use them on our Docker files to add our own group and user, but, this permission and file ownership topic is beyond the scope of our tutorial, but I will include a link down below to an article written by Andrew Schmelian, in which he explains it in great detail. We will be using the standard HTTP port, mapping port 80 of our local machine to port 80 of the Nginx Docker container. For the volumes, we will be mounting your machine's local HTML folder to the HTML folder inside your Docker container. Container name is just for naming your Nginx container, just so we can avoid Docker giving it random names and we can easily identify it, while networks is a way to group our services included in this Docker Compose file so that they can talk to each other. For the PHP service, it has the same set of directives and arguments with Nginx, with the difference being that it has its own Docker file inside the PHP folder, 
and we also have not published any ports, as we will be setting up Nginx as a reverse proxy to it. For our MySQL service, we will straight up use the MySQL image with tag 8.0. We do not have any Docker file for it as we do not need to customize our build, except for those environment variables, which we need to set so we can use it straight out of the box. Please note that I have hard-coded sensitive information in there, which is a very unsecure way of doing it, but since we will be using this only for local development environment, it is fine. One thing to note about the MySQL underscore database environment variable, is that will automatically create a database inside our MySQL container called, Learnfinity Labs. If you take a look inside the MySQL database folder after the container has launched, you will see it is now populated with files and folders from MySQL. Lastly, our node service will use the node image with tag LTS, or long-term support, for the command directive, it will execute, tail f, slash dev slash null, as soon as the node container is up. This is common practice to avoid the container from exiting so we can use the terminal to run commands while we are developing our application. The working underscore dear directive just sets our current working directory to slash var, slash www, slash html, which you may have noticed already, is also being shared by our engine x and php services, because this will be the root directory of our application. Now that we have a fair understanding of our docker compose yaml file, let us move on inside the engine x directory. We have our Docker file for Nginx which have some args and env variables, which might seem a repetition of declaring these variables, but, it's the only way we can pass values to these from a Docker Compose YAML file to this Docker file. The add group and add user lines means, we are adding a group and a user both called Learnfinity Labs, and assign them the GID and UID from the Docker Compose file. The said command stands for stream editor, and it can perform lots of functions on file like searching, find and replace, insertion or deletion. In this case, we just want to find the line user space engine X, and then replace it with user space learn affinity labs in the engine X configuration file, which resides in the slash etc, slash engine X directory. Lastly, we have made our own default configuration file which we are going to copy to our Nginx container so that our configuration can be included when Nginx is launched. The default configuration file is taken from the Laravel documentation and you may use this as a starting point for configuring your web server. To explain briefly what this file does, the first location block handles requests that do not match the regular expression defined in the second location block. This serves as a catch-all location for all other requests. This will handle requests that does not match a specific PHP file, and rewrites them to slash index.php and preserving any query parameters. The second location block is regular expression based, which basically means it will match requests that ends with a .php. And if you look at the fast CGI underscore pass parameter, the value is php colon 9000. What this means is that we are passing the request from the browser to our Nginx web server, then Nginx passes it to our PHP backend server, at port 9000, which is the default port where PHP listens to, hence why it is called an Nginx reverse proxy. Please take note that the PHP value is the name of our PHP container, so if we name the PHP container to something else like backend, then the value for that fast CGI pass would be backend colon 9000. The other thing to note here is that the root directory of the web server is the public directory, which is inside the HTML directory, while the HTML directory is our root directory for our containers. It is no longer the case for our Nginx web server, as all page requests to our application should go to public slash index.php. We do not want anyone visiting our web application to have access to our container's root directory, as this may expose many sensitive configuration files. Now you are seeing how these all tie up with the web server root directory together with the two locations blocks. We have to handle the requests. I hope I have not lost you at this point. We just need to understand one more Docker file and then we can build the images, spin up the containers and see it in action. For the most part, we are doing to PHP what we did with Nginx in terms of the permissions and file ownership. We added the group and user to PHP's own www.configuration file. Also, 
We have a php.ini file for a development environment that we want to be included when php is launched. This development any file just means it is more verbose when it comes to displaying errors to help us debug our application. The only things new here is first, the installation for installing PHP extensions, which we added to our slash usr slash local slash bin folder and made it executable via the chmod plus x command, and then installed composer, which is the PHP package manager, it will help us in installing the Laravel framework. And then there is the pdo underscore mysql extension, which is the driver that will be used by Laravel to connect to our database. Should you need to install other PHP extensions for your own application, this is the easiest way to do it, as it simplifies the installation of PHP extensions. This is mentioned in the PHP Docker official page, and there is a link included in their documentation, should you wish to know more about it. The second thing new here, is the last line, user. Infinity Labs. We are telling Docker that every time the PHP container is started, Infinity Labs will be the default user for anything we run or execute in the PHP container. Alright, so now, we can finally test our local development environment to see if it is working. On your Docker desktop, click Containers, then click PHP Container. Click Terminal Tab. On the Terminal Tab, type in rm.gitignore. The command means remove. We just need to clean up our HTML folder before we can do our next command, which is composer create dash project Laravel slash Laravel period. What this means is that it's telling composer to install the latest version of Laravel and pull all of its dependencies in this directory we are in. If you take a look at your HTML folder now on your local machine, you will see it is filled with files and directories of Laravel in your text editor or IDE. Go to your HTML directory and edit the database configuration in the .env file for Laravel, like so. Change the db underscore host value to MySQL. Then, change the values of db underscore database, db underscore username and db underscore password to Lermfinity Labs. Then hit save. If you remember, these are the values in the MySQL service configuration on our Docker Compose YAML file. In order for us to see if our database is working properly, let us install Laravel Breeze. Laravel Breeze is a minimal, simple implementation of all of Laravel's authentication features, including login, registration, password reset, email verification, and password confirmation. You can read more about it on Laravel's documentation page. We need to include it to our list of Laravel dependencies before we can install it, so type in. Composer require Laravel slash breeze dash dash step. Next is PHP Artisan Breeze colon install. Select from the prompt Blade with Alpine. You can either select yes or no in dark mode support, and just select PHP unit for the testing framework to avoid Composer from removing and downloading other dependencies. Since our objective is just to see quickly if Laravel is working as it should, now that we have installed Laravel Breeze successfully, we need to set up our database for Laravel's Breeze use. Luckily, Laravel has made it easy for us. Again, in the terminal tab, type PHP Artisan Migrate. This will set up our database and create the tables we need for Laravel Breeze. There are two more things we need to do. Execute npm install in npm run dev. NPM stands for Node Package Manager, it's a library and registry for JavaScript software packages. NPM is, if you like, the equivalent of Composer in PHP. And as you may have guessed, since these are JavaScript elements, we will need to run these commands in our Node container. So on your Docker desktop, select Containers, then select Node, then on the Terminal tab, type in NPM install. What this will do is, Install the dependencies needed for our front end development. Next is, we will run npm run dev dash dash space dash dash host. In order for vit to be launched, vit is a modern front and build tool that provides an extremely fast development environment and bundles your code for production. When building applications with Laravel, you will typically use vit to bundle your application's CSS and JavaScript files into production ready assets. All of this stuff that we have used and mentioned can be found on the Laravel documentation page, so be sure to go and visit it. 
Now that we are all done setting Laravel, go to your browser and go to http colon slash slash localhost. Let us try the registration page, profile page, and login pages to make sure all are working. The last thing I want to show you is vit. Let us see it in action. If you are in Windows and vid is not working, let us go ahead and add the following configuration in our vit.config.js file, and hopefully that will solve this issue. I really hope you learned something and enjoyed this tutorial video. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons to get more of these kinds of content. Also click the notification bell so you get notified when new videos are uploaded in our channel. And if you have any questions or feedback, please put those in the comments below.